Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. So this week's book of the week is What I Learned Losing a Million Dollars by Jim Paul and Brendan Moynihan. So I first heard about this book from the great author and investor uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, who said that one of the rare non-charlatanic books in finance, which any endorsement really by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, if you know anything about him, really signals that it's something that you should, you should read. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Jim Paul and why this is a book that you should definitely read. Now, the late Jim Paul went from this poor boy from the state of Kentucky to a wildly successful and rich investor and stockbroker. And he got there through really a series of lucky breaks when it came to investments and stocks. He didn't realize that at the time, but his hubris kind of got him there and unfortunately was very much the unraveling and undoing him. Now, the thing that happened is that his hubris and his ego allowed him to also make a bunch of really bad investment decisions and emotional ones that made him lose millions of dollars and essentially go $400,000 in debt back in 1983. And he spent close to a decade digging himself uh, and pulling himself out of that hole. And he spent about a decade really climbing out of that hole that he dug for himself. Uh, just to get to a position where he was once again successful. He eventually started working in the uh, futures department at Morgan Stanley, and uh, that's where he met his uh, advisor, Brendan Moynihan, and they got together and wrote this book. Now, the reason why I like this book is that you will learn more from this one book on failure than you will from a lot of other books about the secret formula to success, which there really isn't exactly a secret formula to success. More often than not, there's so many business books written about this is what you need to be successful and here's this great achievement and let me, you know, grandstand about these great things we did at this company and tell you how we succeeded. But very few that actually paint the picture of brutal, brutal failure and what was learned from it. And so the first part of this book focuses on that, but the second half of the book focuses on the specific reasons why and how to avoid them. And I want to give you a few key lessons that I got from this book that'll help you to not only avoid losing a million dollars, but more importantly, avoid making really, really bad decisions that can be detrimental to your success, to your personal life and your career. Now, as Paul describes it, what first started out as a, a search for how to make more money and be more successful turned into this decade long dedication of learning how to prevent it and how to stop losing money. Now, learning how to stop something from happening is really the first step to actually preventing it. Now, the first step was knowing what causes that, what causes these huge losses. And in Paul's mind, that was really the first step to understanding how to prevent it. So what was that? Well, as all things usually end up mapping back to, it goes back to psychology and behaviors. And so what they ended up doing was dividing it out into three specific areas. Mental processes, behavioral characteristics, and emotions of an individual and group. Now for mental processes, there's a big difference between external objective losses and then internal subjective personal losses, right? So when it comes to losing something, let's put it in the, in the form of investments. Um, you can pick a, a, an investment, let's say you buy a stock, and let's say the stock goes up one day, but then a few weeks later it goes down. That's a loss, right? That's an objective external measure. But when people start saying, I was wrong, right? That becomes translated into an internal subjective measure. So you're no longer being objective about the decisions you're making. You're taking something personal and subjective and assigning yourself to it. This is why one thing that I point out, and I've read a, uh, a lot about this in, book, in these books behind me, is that for, for, for emotions, right? When we describe depression, right, or happiness, right? What you should not say is, I am depressed, right? Don't say that you are depression. You can say that you feel depression, you have depression, right? But make sure not to identify with it, right? It's the same thing when it comes to a loss or a failure, right? Failure, as the famous Zig Ziglar would say, failure is an event, it's not a person, right? And so understanding these mental processes and really pulling them apart to understand external objective losses and separating it from internal losses. The internal loss is something that can only be unique to you. So if 
I were to lose a parent, that would be very, very uh, sad for me. It would hurt me, right? For somebody else who has really bad parents, they may not be the same thing, right? Those are internal uh, losses, right? So when we start to mix those two things together, which is external things that happen in our environment, in our world, and having some way tying it back to an internal uh, feeling that we have that's something that's subjective, that's when we start to make mistakes. The reason why you start making mistakes is that when you start internalizing these external losses, you start making them subjective, then that clouds your judgment and you make more mistakes, very much like Jim Paul made. It was one mistake after another after another because his hubris, his ego, got tied in with these great stock picks and investments he made, which had nothing to do with him. He just, you know, happened to pick when something was going up, right? But he thought that he personally had something to do with that. And the moment that the market took, took a turn, right, which he does not have control of, these external objective events now were tied to his internal subjective feelings, right? And those things became tangled together. So that when he went to go make other decisions and other investments, of course, because of his internal subjective tie to these objective things, he was making decisions emotionally. And we always talk about the idea and the, you know, I would call it even a fact that you are not going to make good decisions if you make them emotionally. Now, the next part was behavioral characteristics, which essentially Paul starts to describe it in terms of how people really internalize um, these external events and make them subjective. And more importantly, what psychological fallacies, right? or you know, mistakes of the brain, right? Do they make an action when internalizing these sort of things? Now, there's a variety of different cognitive uh, uh, biases and fallacies that you should probably start to learn little by little. You know, but some of those things, for example, is that if you see a certain pattern, right? And you start internalizing this pattern and you think that it's the true thing, more often than not, it's not correct, right? It's just that as human beings, we are pattern seeking, but the problem is that we're actually very bad at spotting patterns. So with Paul, when he came to picking stocks, right? And internalizing those gains and wins, he started to believe that there was a pattern to what he was doing and that he was really good at it, right? So of course, when things changed and he was still applying that psychological fallacy, right? To his external world, he started to make more and more mistakes and that's when we made those big losses. And the last part, which is one of my favorite sections, was psychology of the crowd because especially when it comes to markets, you know, those are influenced by, you know, groups of people. If you think about the stock market, this is essentially, the, you know, our economy through the psychology of the masses putting an expectation to something, right? And really deciding whether it's going to go up or down. And so trying to understand how a crowd thinks, right, and acts will help you, you know, prevent bad decision making on your part. And more importantly, a big, big piece to keep in mind is that, you know, a, an individual who's very emotional about to make a decision, that's a really bad thing. But what's even more dangerous is a crowd that's very emotional. So think about crowds of people or even the markets when they get very excited about something right? You have this, you know, fear of missing out. And there's all this social proof because everybody's interested in something, you know, or not, right? And so really understanding those dynamics will really help you make better and wiser decisions, more importantly, objective ones. And of course, I have to mind loom a recommendation with this book that I think you'll love because these are some really great books on crowd psychology. So a little internet magic. <laughs> Gotta get better up at this. So Two really great books on crowds. One is a very old one, The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind by Gustave Le Bon. This was written literally back in 1841. So it's it's quite an old book. Um, and you know, Gustave Le Bon writes about um, crowd uh, psychology when it came to the French Revolution. It's a fantastic book, really good one. And then another one, more more recent one, is The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sorowiecki. Sir what I like about this book, and it goes very well with the with the with the crowd, um, um, is that this one is uh, is something that James used to understand how you can use crowds to make good decisions. Right? When is a crowd helpful? When can a crowd sort of illuminate and help you? 
um, develop something that's better than just an individual making decision alone, right? So I think these two books together would be really fantastic recommendations. So that's your book of the week. Again, I think it's a really great uh, business book to learn from. More importantly, how often do you read a book that's about failure? Right. Um, I, I think it's a great introduction, not only for somebody who's interested in investing, but more importantly, anybody really who's in business to understand some of the more common psychological fallacies and emotional uh, triggers that one might be under, whether it's through crowds or individuals. The more you're able to understand how your brain and mind works, right, the better off you're going to be. And the reason why I say brain and mind is that your brain is literally the same thing that's been, you know, what your ancestors had thousands of years ago, right? That thing is still the same thing today. It's dumb, stupid, and it's literally like, it's like a like an animal, right? Versus your mind, your mind is infinite in wisdom and capabilities. And you have to start understanding how your brain's going to react and function and how can you use your mind to consciously manage your brain and understand it. So that being said, that is your book of the week. Happy Wisdom Wednesday. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.